Hi, this instructional video this time is about a circle that's inscribed in an equilateral triangle and what we're trying to do is find the total area enclosed within the triangle. Let me draw a diagram to give us a better picture. So let's see, a circle is inscribed in an equilateral triangle that has a side of length three units, okay? So here's a circle. Nice circle. Uh, anyway, here's an equilateral. The drawing thing is just not happening for me today. There it is, <laughs> okay? And it's an equilateral that has a three units. There it is. Now the circle also happens to circumscribe, go around another equilateral, just like my previous instructional video, where we had to find the similarity ratio between the big one and the small one. But this time, what they're asking is, what is the total area enclosed within the triangle? Here's a triangle, here's a triangle. So what is a non-triangle is this right there, this shaded region. And that's what they're asking. Here's a triangle, here's a triangle that has been enclosed. What remains is the non-triangle. So it looks like what we need to find out is, first, the, tri uh, the circle. We need to find the area of a circle. And we know that the area of a circle formula is pi r squared. So we need to find out what the radius r is. We don't know this right now. And from the circle, we're going to subtract the small triangle away from it. That little thing right there. And the area for that, of course, is one-half base times height. We don't have a height. Do we have the base? Actually, we do. Based on that one to two ratio from the previous instructional video, we do. But we need to find the height. And when we subtract the triangle away from the circle, what we have remaining is then the little residual pieces right there. And that is what we're going to find. When we take this, subtract that, we're going to end up with that little shaded region. Okay? That's what we're trying to do. Why don't you see if you could, why don't you pause the video and see if you can figure this out on your own. What can you do? Go ahead, try it. All right then. Let's start looking for the area of a circle. And look for the radius, in fact. Here's what we know. Let's look at the big triangle. It looks like we have uh, the three equal sides of three. That means if you were to draw an attitude, and in this case, it will be the median, which will go to the midpoint, we will have a right triangle. And in that case, that right triangle becomes, the three side becomes the hypotenuse, the longest part of the right triangle. The base is half of the three. Can you see that? Because this was an equal side, this was also three, but now we only need half of it, so it's 1.5. So we know two sides to this triangle. We just need to look for the third side. And to find that, we could use the Pythagorean theorem. You know, a squared plus b squared equals a c squared. It really does not matter which of the leg legs is the A or the B. So let's just call this the A. I just, I don't know, I just like it that way. <laughs> so this is 1.5 squared, and B is what we do not know, which is the height, in fact. And the C is the hypotenuse of three. So 1.5 times 1.5 is 2.25 plus B squared equals the 9, solve for b by subtracting 2.25 from both sides of the equation. So b squared is equal to 6.75. Now we want to square root that. So what's the square of 6.75? So let's do a factor tree to find the prime factorization for this number. Now, 75, that's sort of a hint. I think 25 will go in there. Why? So I want to think about perfect square numbers. 
So 25, let's, let's do a calculator here. So we got 6.75, divide that by a perfect square number of 25, and I get 0.27. Nice, because that is a 3 times 9. But eventually, there will be something remaining inside a radical, and I do not, I do not want that to be a decimal, so let's use the whole number 3. So divide 0.27, divided by 3, that can, becomes 0.09. And that's good because 0 0.09 is a perfect square made up of 0.3 times 0.3. And of course, 25 is made up of 5 and 5. So what is a square root of 6.75? It is made up of 5 and 0.3, which is 1.5. And what remains is a square root of 3. So that's the height. This happens to be the height of the big triangle. That's the big triangle. Now, why do you need to find that? Oh, by the way, <laughs> if you wanted to, you could have also used, instead of the Pythagorean theorem, is the fact that if you have, let's, a second way to look at this is, this was an equilateral triangle, or equiangular. The reason why I say that is because this is 60, 60, 60. Why? Because remember, the interior of a triangle is 180 total. And divide that by three angles, because it's equal angular, becomes 60 degrees each. And But however, remember, I split that in half. So what that in turn becomes, this is still 60. Now this becomes 90 perpendicular. Then this is a 30. And in geometry, the students are taught about the 30, 60, 90 ratio. It's a rule. And it says that the proportions are, if this is x, then this is twice the x, and the height becomes square root of 3x. So if x is 1, it'll be 1, 2, square root of 3. If this was 2, it'll be 2, 4, and 2, square root of 3. The same ratio for 30, 60, 90 rule. So if this is 3, then x becomes 3 over 2. And to find the height, you just substitute it in there. So square root of 3x and equals the height. So that's 3 over 2 square root of 3. That's the height. So height is simply 3 over 2, which is 1.5 square root of 3. So either way, you get the same height.